Do you like snooping through people's stuff? Do you eavesdrop on the conversation of strangers while in coffee shops? Have you ever considered a career in the NSA just to get your fix of other people's interpersonal drama? If you said yes to any or all of these questions, then telling lies might just be the game for you. I'm Cabinet Otter, you can call me Otter. Today we're reviewing the game Telling Lies. Here's your 30 second summary. Telling Lies is more of an immersive storytelling experience than a traditional video game. The game's developer, Sam Barlow, describes it as a desktop thriller. The game is played entirely on a virtual PC desktop where the player watches full motion video, so real actors, not digital avatars, and slowly discovers the story intertwining each of the four main characters. The game released in 2019 and is available for PC as well as Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. At the time of this recording, it's also available free via Xbox Game Pass. Okay, let's dive into the review. We'll go through the things that I thought were the pros and cons of this game, and then at the bottom line, I'll tell you if I think you should play it. If this sounds like your kind of game and you prefer to go in cold, which I always recommend for any narrative-focused game, you can skip to the bottom line chapter of this video to hear if and how I recommend you play this game without any spoilers. If you don't mind spoilers, then go ahead and just keep watching. Okay, let's start by talking about the things I didn't like, and the first glaring obvious thing was that there's just an absolute lack of direction on what you're supposed to do at the start of the game. You start off with zero clear framework of what you're looking for, you're given a brief overview of the database you're working with, but there's no context on your goal in using this footage. This is, by rights, knowledge your character should have, so the aimless start is really frustrating. You're left to wonder, what's the point? What's the goal? In the spiritual prequel to this game, Her Story, you're trying to solve a specific crime and you know that going in, so you're watching footage with that in mind. But with this game, what am I investigating? Am I just being a weirdo creep? What's my objective? I don't mind open exploration when I'm looking at a fun, interactive game world, but aimlessly watching other people's boring conversations is not a fun or engaging way to start off. This ties pretty closely into the next thing I disliked about this game. This frustration with the lack of direction at the start of the game carries over to the characters. I don't have any objective, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to care about in their videos, so immediately I'm just irritated by them rambling about IKEA or popcorn or whatever it is. This immediate dislike was not helped along by the in-game dialogue. All of the main characters come across as boring and insipid at best, with some who are just genuinely despicable people. The only character I wound up liking is the one who is literally blackmailing strangers, because at least she's interesting and unique and is not just a trope of a frustrated suburban mom or an oh-so-quirky hippie girl. The main character, the man who connects the stories of the three women, is the most dislikable of the bunch. He's selfish, he has anger issues, and is overall just the worst. Our dislike of these characters got so intense, we cheered and laughed when something bad happened to them. Her name. <laughs> They're in Ohio. I love her so much. While the format of the game forces us to view the plots through disjointed snippets, this disjointed feeling is amplified by the choppy nature of the writing. The snapshots we're given can make the characters feel superficial and uncaring. There's this whole side story with one of the character's moms who's there to help provide childcare while the character's husband is out on assignment. 
And both parents just keep complaining about this grandmother who apparently is not only putting her life on pause to come be a live-in support for them, but she's also apparently dealing with some serious health issues that are very only briefly touched on. It reminded me of the mom from the movie The Room who shows up, announces she has cancer, no one cares, and it's never mentioned again. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. I also wanted to briefly touch on the timeline. This game takes place over a roughly two year period, and you're supposed to figure out where things piece together in the timeline by looking at the specific dates on the video and remembering them. I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, and I don't even care about these characters enough to remember their names, so I'm certainly not gonna remember individual timestamps. It's not a huge deal, just kind of annoying. While the game mechanics here aren't horrendous, there are some issues with the controls. First, when you find a new video and jump into it, it starts at the point where the word you searched for is mentioned, and you have to manually scroll back to the start of the video every single time to see the clip in full. The analog nature of rewinding is fun once or twice, but after doing it on dozens of videos, it just feels like a waste of time. Speaking of time, it's really unclear what advances the in-game clock that eventually concludes the game. We came to assume it was watching certain milestone clips that gave us what the game considered to be key information, but when you remember that we still don't know what we're actually supposed to be getting out of the footage, even the milestone clip theory leaves the, you as the player in the dark. A minor mention, but kind of a funny one, since the game takes place on a PC, they did include Solitaire as a little side game you can play, but the Solitaire game is actually broken, it's missing a king. This is doubly funny since in this interview I found, Sam Barlow complained about one of his playtesters spending too much time on Solitaire. A very large chunk of the content in this game is sexual in nature, because the sole male among the main characters is in a sexual relationship with all three of the main female characters. Two of those relationships are in real life, physical relationships, and the last one is just purely digital, but still, it's there. So a huge amount of the content you have to sit through to advance the game is sexual. Now, I'm not a prude, and I think it's absolutely okay for video games or any other type of media to have sexual content if it develops the character or is meaningful to the plot in some way, but 90% of this content isn't and doesn't. I've read some commentary that this is sort of the point of the game, pausing here to note that this is commentary I've read from fans and critics, and not something I've found the dev team themselves say. The point being that if you're a surveillance agent tasked with watching footage to understand what happened related to a specific crime, there's going to be a natural temptation to dig into all of the non-relevant stuff too, especially if it's juicy or intimate. But there's two problems with that theory. First, we don't know what the specific objective we're supposed to be investigating is. So of course we're gonna get off topic and get off track because we don't know what is relevant and what isn't. Secondly, I hated every second the game made me watch these creepy scenes. I already disliked these characters as people and now I have to put up with them awkwardly phone sexing each other? Yes, I'm a mind vampire. That's how I made all my money. Now she's a mind vampire? No, you are Alex. You are a business companion. Oh, they're like role playing. I lured you to my castle? Ma'am. If someone said that in the bedroom, I think a lot of us would burst out laughing. Except I guess if you're a game critic, because look at these review ratings. Did I accidentally play the wrong video game? Last, but certainly not least, there aren't any cute animals in this game. That's a hard negative for me. Okay, let's talk about the stuff I did like about this game. As you can probably imagine from everything you just heard, there wasn't a lot I liked about this game, but I did actually really like the concept. I would like to go back and check out the spiritual predecessor to this game, Her Story, which operated on a similar mechanic but was focused on one character and unraveling a specific mystery, a murder. I think having a more limited scope and a framework of a goal before going in would be a lot more successful and interesting. You think it's my dog?
I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. As clunky and dumb as this dialogue is, the actors really deliver it. They come across as believable people. That's probably why I wound up disliking them so intensely. You know when the villain in a movie does a really good job at being the bad guy, and so you start hating their face? It's like that. So major bravo to them for making that work across the board. They came across as real people who are really genuinely hateable. I'm from Ohio. I've always lived in Ohio. I used to work in real estate. I own two apartments, both underwater, and the mortgages kill me. My husband is a loading dock supervisor and he doesn't mind what I do as long as I tell him how pathetic and lonely and strange my clients are. I only do this so I don't have to go to school and become a medical transcriptionist. So every day I log on here and hang out with you assholes when I could be doing anything else. Because you don't care about anyone in this game at all, it's pretty funny when bad things happen to them. It's also fun to search for the silliest words you can think of and to talk smack about all of the characters. It's kind of like watching a So Bad It's Good movie. Not something you want to do every day, but it can be a fun thing to do with friends. So let's get to the bottom line. Should you play this game? The bottom line here is that telling lies is just not my cup of tea. While it's beautifully acted and there's an intricate plot that should be really enthralling, I just found myself bored. I didn't like any of the characters, so I didn't care to unravel their mysteries on my own drive, and the game doesn't give you any firm objective to meet, so you're just sort of aimlessly wandering. All in all, I think this is something that you should play with friends and maybe a few cocktails. I had a really fun time laughing about this game with my stream chat, but if I had been alone, I would have walked away pretty quickly. So absolute bottom line, grab some buddies, grab some brews, throw on telling lies as a fun group effort, and replace your next bad movie night with a bad video game night. That's my recommendation anyways. If you disagree, let me know why in the comments. If you play this drunk with your friends, let me know how that goes in the comments too. Next month, we'll be reviewing a retro title called Ghostmaster, and I hope to see you then. Bye! Hey, it's me, Cabinet Otter. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, or come hang out with me live on Twitch. See you soon!